I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board to order. I believe the agenda, there's a few little changes, but we'll go over them as we get to them. Uh, I would like to ask for a motion to accept the planning consultant's meet, meeting minute notes. So Meet moved. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, have you been able to review the August 21st, 2017 minutes? They're excellent. Yes, I have two, two minor uh, amendments to that. Um, if I could find my notes here. suggested small access holes at the bottom of the fence uh, at intervals. I had not uh, suggested that. I said get rid of the holes at intervals and have the whole bottom of the fence Raised accessible. up, right. Raised up, yes. Um, okay. And there was one other thing, but I'm not sure. It was a double negative thing. So maybe that was in that. Maybe it's in the present. Anyway, not, not important, but it's just some small use of a double negative that uh, changed the meaning. I can't find it right now. So oh, okay. Well, uh, any other amendments? Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Very good. I'm abstaining. I was not present at the meeting. Okay. We have four in favor and one abstention and two currently not with us. Oh, Woody will not be here tonight. He informed me at the last meeting. Alrighty. I have no correspondence or announcements. And... So I poke myself in the eye. We have about a minute or so to our first public hearing, which we, of course, will not be holding, but I'll explain that as soon as we get there. There's a letter on that. Yeah, okay. I read that. I'll read this into the... Okay. Hey, Richard. How are we doing? Hi. Sorry. Okay, then our first public hearing tonight was scheduled for LXMI property holdings, 18 Haggerty Hill Road, special use permit and site plan approval. Uh, we're continuing it from July 17th, 2017. And I have a letter from the uh, applicant's attorney. Dear Chair Trimble and members of the board, please be advised that this firm represents LXMI property holdings, LLC, in connection with the development of the above referenced property. We respectfully request an additional adjournment of the continued public hearing scheduled for September 18th, 2017 to October 16th, 2017 to allow the applicant time to resolve site plan issues with the neighbors. Thank you in advance for your consideration. Victoria Polidoro. Ooh, hi, hi. suddenly got loud. Oh, were you talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, could I hear a motion to continue the uh, public hearing for LXMI property holdings to October 16th, 2017 at... 635? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. All right. Okay. You want to talk about scheduling? Yeah. Um, we were going to try and hold, our next public hearing is a quarter of seven, so we were going to try and hold a... Um, training session on historic preservation and we uh, with all the things that have come up we haven't scheduled it yet we do have a meeting scheduled for October 2nd which at the present time doesn't have a whole lot on it I believe yeah, but that's going to be the and what oh right okay. what we're going to that's we're right looking at the November, the November we have one meeting in November it's the third Monday in November the first Monday in November we can't meet because it's the night before Election Day and this room's all set up for voting so we can't meet in this room. Uh, we could potentially meet Wednesday. The ZBA does not meet the first Wednesday of the month in November. Um, how do people feel about 
trying to schedule the historic preservation training session at that time. That sound good for everyone? What, what is the date again? Fifteenth. It, no, no, you said the No, no, it's, it, it's the 8th of November, the first Wednesday. Oh, the first Wednesday. The second, first Wednesday. Second Wednesday. This is a, a presentation that who was putting on? We thought we would ask both Nancy Kelly as the Rhinebeck historian and also Julian Adams to come down, who does this from the State and Department of State. Uh, but it will qualify for the training hours. Right. I, I, I realize that, and I did see something about mandatory. I've actually taken the course already, so I assume that it's not really mandatory, it's right. just an option for everybody. Right. It would be different than the one we took out at the Farm and Home Center, is that the one you're referring to? No, up oh. in Saratoga. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is simply Ooh. satisfying. One of the sessions yeah. is probably, probably was even her. It's simply satisfying mandatory training for those. No, what, Nancy's our local yet. historian. I'll, I'll be, oh no, not Nancy. Uh, Julian? Adams, yeah, he, he, yeah, he has done a number of presentations on it in a number of communities. I'll be here if I can. Okay, but but you're excused since you do have your time in, so you don't have to show. Okay, does that sound like something? Um, could I hear a motion to approve doing historic preservation training November eighth, two thousand seventeen? What time would you like to do this at? I guess that's the other question. What time works? Six thirty, our normal time. How about earlier? We could. Can everyone do earlier? Before do. Five. Five o'clock? Four thirty? I can't do five. But you okay. need to base it on five. Five. Okay. How long is the session? It'll probably be an hour and a half to two hours, I imagine. Four thirty. Yeah, I can't do four thirty. All right, let's try five to seven. Five to seven? Okay. Okay, five to seven. And we will of course confirm to you that we got these people to do it. So you'll know. Will we get an email confirming that? Absolutely. If not a nice card in the mail. So inviting. Nice. So uh, I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good. We'll put that together as we struggle on. Um, the other thing that we were going to do tonight, what we'll be able to do when we get to Hudson Solar is acknowledge that we are now the lead agency for that project. What we discussed doing is then having a workshop session to, to go over the seeker uh, part two of the seeker form that has been uh, you know, presented to us as part of the submission and to look at what additional information, if any, we feel we need that hasn't yet been given to us, how we want to work on that. Um, in talking to Art and Melody, we thought since we have a somewhat light schedule for our October 2nd meeting at this point, that might be the time to do that. We you know, have our meeting at 6.30, deal with what business we have, if there are rollovers, things like that, adjourn the meeting and then go to the, um, into a workshop session to go over the EAF part two. Uh, does that sort of sound okay with you guys? <coughs> yeah. Okay. That we do that. Okay. Before you, uh, before you actually schedule that, uh -oh. uh, you should assume the lead agency yeah. status report, oh. which uh, okay. is a draft resolution on which uh, the uh, circulation of the notice of intent occurred uh, 30 days have since lapsed. I believe the only comments, there were technical comments that were received from DEC, but certainly no, no uh, comment uh, dissenting to, uh, uh, to the uh, planning board's lead agency status. So there's a procedural resolution uh, on page 10, in the middle of the page, uh, basically accepting lead agency status. Which I will read. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board, upon distribution on July 18, 2017, of a notice of intent to serve as lead agency under Seeker for coordinated environment quality review of the proposed solar, <coughs> Hudson Solar Solar Power Plant on a leased portion of lands by Barry Sherrod at 355 Wurttemberg Road, and upon finding both no dissent to have been expressed by any of the other potential involved agencies to set intent, and more than 30 days to have passed since distribution hereby declares itself lead agency under Seeker for said project and assumes all responsibilities of a lead agency for such coordinated environmental review quality review for this type one action in the manner set forth within part 617 NYCRR. Could I hear a motion to approve? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Very good. Uh, okay. And, and I, I abstain. Now at this point, could I hear a motion to hold a workshop to review the uh, EAF for this project on at our November, our, I'm sorry, our October 2nd meeting in workshop form at, after the conclusion of our regularly scheduled planning board meeting? So that again. I'm, I'm I'll second it. Thank you. I vote aye. Uh, all in favor? Aye. aye. Very good. Okay. 
And we're creeping up on our next. What else do we have in here that might? Nothing. I think that was it. That's about it. Okay. There are no, uh, there are no CBA, CBA referrals. No. And uh, don't make all feel intimidated that uh, the uh, EAF discussion on Hudson School is going to follow regular business on the second because it's very likely that regular business is going to be soon. They're going to require no more than about 15 minutes, if any. Uh, there don't appear to be rollover items. The uh, agenda deadline has passed for any new items. Uh, and at most, there may be a referral or two uh, coming uh, forward from the ZBA uh, when it when it meets. So that's uh, that light agenda is, as Michael pointed out, extremely light, and it's a good time to, to really delve into the uh, dots and solar. I don't suppose this clock is slow. <laughs> I don't know, none of us had dinner yet. Let's not talk about oh, food. I did, I did have dinner. So oh. I apologize. Lunch. <laughs> That's true, lunch was missing. <coughs> we are a long suffering group. Softly close. Okay. Our next public hearing is Robert Stone, 11 Morton Road, subdivision plat approval. Conduct of public hearing on application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, subdivision of land, in the matter of the proposed consolidation of a 1.311 acre parcel with existing dwelling and related improvements adjacent to a 0.348 acre parcel vacant land except for gravel parking areas, the former or both being identified. The tax numbers within the Rhinecliff Hamlet District and the town's LWRA being classified as an unlisted action under Seeker. Take it away. Hi. So, yeah, my property has uh, two parcels uh, as a result of a ancient surveying error, which we're here to correct um, and to combine these two parcels into one. That's basically it. Just eliminating this line on the surveying map here. This was a gore a long ago. Okay. So, that's that's really it. That's it. That's it. All righty. I move we approve this. Okay, well, first you have something you have to say, because you and Edna did the uh, did the review did the uh, site visit. So would you like it's to tell us? A long time ago, but oh. we remember. She, she remembers it. Okay. There are no issues whatsoever. Should move ahead. Okay. Anyone here from the uh, CAB? Okay. I think I have something from them here. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Conservation Advisory Board, upon review of the submitted application information, this board does not find any impact related to the intended subdivision with the environmental policies set forth in the town zoning code. The Waterhorn Advisory Committee, upon reviewing the submitted completed consistency form and all of the related information, this committee does not find there to be any impact to the LWRP policies in connection with the intended action. And uh, at this point, I'd open it up for public comment. Very quiet night. <laughs> okay. No issues, and, uh, now I move for you. There are two, there are, okay. there are two uh, routine resolutions. Okay. Any comments from the peanut gallery? 
I do. Yeah, you want to say something? At, at one time, we we identified the fact that this is really a consolidation and not a subdivision. Correct. Yet it falls under our subdivision review. And it everything. does. And it seems to be, I imagine, a rather costly. And costly time and time consuming. Uh, I agree. When, in fact, what it's doing is consolidating lots and, and creating a larger lot, which is part of our whole. Correct. So, do we have anything on our list, our hit list, to say the next time? Yeah. It's, yes. It's on the list. It's at the top uh, of the list for the, the subdivision list, regs. Uh, last time the board, the town board considered uh, amendments to the town code, uh, restrict those amendments to the zoning law. Uh, this would be an amendment of the subdivision regulations. Yes, it's on the list. Okay, but this I, would, one, I, would, I would expect it to be in the next yeah. round. Of and the and I some people consider certain things ultra important and we have mm -hmm. to pass them right away and all of a sudden fires light up and everybody moves. But things like this affect our residents mm -hmm. paying for no reason. I agree. Okay. Un unfortunately, for making a point, no. it needs to be unfortunately, this is the process we have to go through. We have to have the public hearing. So that means we have to have a meeting to accept the application, set up the public hearing. Right, until we change it. And then exactly. Right. Until, the it, town board until the town board changes it and basically just eliminates this from the subdivision regulations. All you do is you take a consolidation deed down to the county clerk's office and file it. With the approval of the town assessor first. May With I, the approval of the town assessor. May I be rude and say how much is this costing you? Uh, several hundred dollars, like I think four hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. And time wise? Uh, oh, five hundred because there was sixty, five hundred and ten dollars I get it. And time wise, I've come here three times. No. Okay. Starting in June. Yes. And we don't even validate parking, do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's something that's recognized that has to be changed, yeah. and um, I, it's going to happen. Because it doesn't, it does never made any sense to anybody why they it require this. It really, it's not fulfilling for us or anyone, anyone at all. Yeah, no one has been able to explain to me why they put it in the zoning okay. law. I'm sorry, in the subdivision regulations. Yeah, it was yeah. a mystery to me. Using an eraser yeah. instead of a pencil. I don't see. Yeah, <laughs> or whiteout. Yeah, if so you can find it. it. Well, first of all, what we have to do is approve the uh, seeker resolution, which basically we're finding uh, there to be no environmental issues. And we're going to so authorize the chair to so execute the short EAF and direct the planning board clerk to distribute and file the executed determining determination of significance in the manner set forth within the seeker implementing regulations, Title Six, Part Six One Seven Point One Two, NYCRR. Could I hear a motion so to approve? Moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Could I hear a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Very good. Okay, we're going to go on now to. The application for subdivision, which is actually consolidation. We approve the application with the chair authorized to stamp and sign the subdivision plat upon the applicant's satisfaction of each of the below conditions and or requirements within 180 calendar days of the adoption of this resolution. A, stamping of the subdivision plat is a non-jurisdictional subdivision or for filing purposes only by the Dutchess County Health Department. Submission of subdivision plat drawings in the form and number specified within town code chapter 101, section 101, dash 4.4 except as be modified to a lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements and including all requiring stamps, seals, and certifications and payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts due the town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of this application. In taking this action, the planning board notes there are no new lots or additional housing sites created through this lot consolidation. Accordingly, neither the provision of the town code addressing the set aside of recreational or other open space land, nor the provision addressing the development of affordable housing is deemed applicable to approval of this subdivision application. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? I will poll the board, Eric. Aye. Edna? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. Richard? What happened to Richard? He's way out in the hall. Oh, okay. Richard, well, and I will vote aye, so you got, you got, you got, you know, five anyway. Um, <laughs> five oh. Do I turn Richard, these over to Richard, you now? Richard, say yes. Aye. 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 Six oh. <laughs> Very good. Do so I turn these over to you now? You're approved. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm um, what you want, what you'll want to do is... I don't think there's anything. What I will be doing with those is taking them down. I just check with Donna to make sure all, all the bills have been paid and everything that you don't owe any more money or anything like right. that. If you want to leave those with I'll Gretchen, just, I'll just leave it. Yeah, I'll leave it. Yeah, with Gretchen. leave them right over here with Gretchen, and she will have them for me. And then once I can check with Donna, we'll get them all done. Okay. You may now legally park in your driveway. Yes. Yeah. 
Okie doke. Okay, ready for our next public hearing. Ronald Planbeck, 44 Old Post Road, site plan approval. Conduct a public hearing on application for site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of replacement of two older mobile homes with two new larger manufactured homes on lease lots 15 and 21 within 3.3 acre Hidden Valley Mobile Manufactured Home Park in the neighborhood residential water resource overlay and flood fringe districts in the town's LWRA and adjacent to a certified agricultural district being classified as a type two action under seeker. Ready for us? Take it away. All right, good evening folks. Uh, my name is Pat Prendergast. I'm a consulting engineer from Kinderhoop, New York. I'm here to uh, help out my buddy Ron Planbeck, who owns a uh, mobile home park on uh, Old Post Road um, in, the, uh, in the town of Rhinebeck. Um, Ron has owned this park uh, for the past 37 years. What he is looking to do is, um, he's got 10 trailer spots in there now. He'd like to maintain 10 trailer spots. Two of these homes are really old, and he needs to, uh, he'd like to replace them. And uh, according to your code, if you're replacing a mobile home, you need site plan approval. So the proposal is to replace these two homes with brand new ones, and they would be placed on uh, a, a brand new concrete slab. These ones would actually be tied down this is part of the new building code. Every mobile home has to be tied down. If you drive around the county, most of them aren't tied down, but these two will be. Um, so uh, this, this has to go through the building department for the structural aspects of it. But basically, that's the plan. The two new homes would be in exactly the same spot. Um, we're going to work around the existing trees. And really, that's it. Alrighty, I think we're up to the observations of the two people who were fortunate enough to go out and take a look. Eric, do you want to start? And yeah, we went out there and uh, it's a sweet little uh, trailer park and uh, it is really a hidden valley. Um, and uh, I saw absolutely no reason why any of this one couldn't be done, shouldn't be done. And I think it's going to be an improvement and uh, I don't see any difficulties. I'm curious to see how they're going to make the turn. <laughs> But uh, other than that, uh, and uh, we didn't, if they do have to cut out some shrubbery, it's nothing going to be significant. They're going to have to move the mailbox uh, arrangement. But other than that, it seems all doable, and I see no problem with it. Okay, I, I second what uh, Eric says. I saw absolutely no problem. It's just going to be an improvement. It's actually a very lovely setup down there. And uh, I agree with Eric. I, I hope you can make the corner, <laughs> get the trailer, get the old one out and the new one in. So... But no, there were no issues that I saw either. Okay, uh, would the Town Conservation Advisory Board like to say anything? Or would it be better if I just read what you have here? <laughs> I think you better read it. If we, we were set with the subdivision, I believe we Okay, well this is, this is the, um, this is the uh, mobile home, manufactured oh, home. This, this plan, yes, it is. We, uh, we didn't see any issue. We would only advise that uh, best management plan practices and the WIC is WAC has a similar uh, approach all righty all right at this point I'd like to open it up to public comment if there's any public comment hearing none anything from Richard just a question Given the new regulation for uh, tying it down, concrete pad, does the uh, does the does the trailer park assume that responsibility, that expense? Where do you I put that? Make that available. Um, it's what is required for any new one has to one side. So it's your and expense. I will be doing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? And anyone from the public? Okay, I'd like, since it's a type two action under seeker, no further review is required. So I'd like to hear a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All righty. Well, let me read what I have here. This is a draft resolution of approval. 
deems the proposed work and continuing use to be consistent with pertinent town coastal policies in consideration of the limited extent of work proposed accepts the submitted documents as adequate in consideration of the site plan information requirements set forth at town code chapter 125 zoning section 12575c1 approves the application for site plan approval and authorizes the chair to stamp and sign the site plan drawings upon the applicant's satisfaction of each of the below conditions and or requirements within six calendar months of the adoption of this resolution. A, submission of the above cited drawings in the form number specified within town code chapter 125, section 125-75B, except as may be modified as to a lesser number by the chair in consideration of filing and distribution requirements and including therein all required stamps, seals, and certifications. Payment of any outstanding fees and or reimbursable amounts to the Town of Rhinebeck related to the review and processing of this application. In taking this action, the Planning Board further authorizes the Town Zoning Enforcement Officer and or Building Inspector following receipt of the above cited drawings stamped and signed by the Chair to issue first a building permit and subsequently a certificate of occupancy use for each of the two single family dwellings upon his determination, both the terms of this resolution and all their codes, laws, rules and regulations within the purview of the ZEO and or Building Inspector, including but not limited to requirements of the New York State Uniform Building, Construction and Fire Prevention Code, have been satisfied. Could I hear a motion to approve? I move. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, poll the board. Richard? Aye. Aye. Uh, sure. Aye. <laughs> Melody? Aye. And I vote aye. It was 6-0, six, six, oh, Gretchen. Everyone voted aye. You're set to go. Thank you. Thank you. Coming your way. Okay, let's see. Okay, our, fi our next public hearing. Jeff Baker, 110-1010-1014, Route 308. Special use permit, site plan approval and wetlands permit. Conduct of combined public hearing on application for wetlands permit under town code, chapter 120, wetlands and applications for special use permit and site plan review and approval under town code chapter 125 zoning in the matter of the dredging and of approximately 400 cubic yards from Lake Sapasco and placement of eight cubic yards of sand within an area of approximately 450 square feet uh, being classified as an unlisted action under seeker. Good evening. Uh, our piece of property out on Route 308 goes down to Lake Sapasco, and what we're proposing is to dig out a section of the lake to make it a swimming hole, take the material that will be dug out, and then uh, deposit it on another section of the property. And then we're going to put some sand down there to make a beach and a swimming area. Okay, and to my understanding, you have received a permit from DEC for the excavation and for then the uh, land disposal of yes. the material excavator. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions? I have several questions. Um, the, uh, where you're going into the water, is that going to be a slope bank or is that going to be steep? No, it's not going to be steep. It's going to be gradual. Okay, and like what, what percent grade approximately? Like? 12.2. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm not exactly sure what the grade is going to be. I imagine that Army... Are you going to maintain the sand on that slope? Is it yes. What I'm, okay. So yes. it's going to be gentle enough to maintain yes. the sand on that slope. But then you can go down to six feet or more as soon as you can and then continue that depth outward to the 40 feet? Correct. Okay. And that uh, fan-shaped area that you have, that there's no encroachment on the wetland on either side... No. Okay. And we have to put up something called the turbidity barrier. Right. It's a vinyl, like a fence that'll go around the area that we're going to excavate. Right. So that it won't disturb the rest of the lake. So you're going to still be surrounded by lily pads in, in that area, but your, your section will be cleared because it'll be too deep for the, for the plants to root. Well, another project that the lake committee is undertaking right now, Sapasco Lake Committee, is to get uh, a firm in there to take the lily pads out. So we're in the process of also doing that. Is, and is that going to be just plant removal? or is that Yes, be just plant removal. As well? No, just plant just removal. Just plant removal. Right. And the purpose of that is to keep... The lake healthy. Uh, okay. So you're saying the, the lily pads actually 
ruin the health of the lake? Yes. Yes. Because it's too much plant life. I don't know the real technical issues, but we have a, a management firm that oversees the lake, and that was their recommendation that the lily pads be removed. Okay. So my project is also in keeping with that. It's kind of a dredging pool that they run up and down the lake, right? Yeah, I think it's called a harvester or something like that. I've seen them do it at Wuhan's Lake in Stanford, and no one wants to pay the expense, but it does keep the lake apparently much healthier. Right. I guess at this point I should say that Edna and Eric did the uh, site visit so they can would they like to report on the site visit um, I do have a question on the disposal area we tried or Eric tried to pace it off from the road and from the driveway it's 200 feet from the road and 130 feet from the driveway that put Eric just about here on this picture and the land comes like this. There's like a little hill that comes like that. Where Eric ended up is right next to this wood, Jeff. And the land does go down into the wood. The area that we're going to dispose of, there's like a bowl-shaped area right in the field. It's already there. It's a big well, depression. The, the, the area that feels more bowl-shaped is closer to the driveway than is indicated on, on the map. So at 130 feet off the driveway, we found ourselves close to the edge of the woods. And then as soon as you get to the woods, then it slopes down rather steeply into a, a little vernal pool. Well, this, the area isn't anywhere near the woods. I don't know if you noticed. Did you notice the big area? It's like a big bowl shape. No. Well, that's where it's, the fill is going to go. The only place that we saw that was bowl-shaped is on the way, on, to the left of the drive going down to the lake. No. That was, there's, but that's there's, filled with water, so that's not... No, that's not the area. Well, uh, can you verify where it is on this map? This is the map we're looking at. I don't know where you ended up and how I ended up. We have one here. This is the driveway. Right. Here. Right. Yeah. And we I, mean, I took a tape and I measured it. This is a big bowl shaped area here. Okay, but it's probably not, 10, 12. It's not well, really here, here, I am, here I am at 130 feet off the driveway. Yeah, here's the driveway. And I'm almost to the woods. So he's talking here. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, but I don't even right. miss it. It's a big. Well, well, is it, does it show on this on this picture? Well, how close to the woods, roughly, do you plan to deposit the spoils? I think that's our primary concern, since the land falls away in the woods. Two hundred feet off the road. But how close to the woods? I mean, just not close at all. I think it's very close. Like I said, it's going to be, it's going to go into this. It's already a big, like I said, bowl-shaped area. It's not going to be well, the area we saw was not particularly bowl-shaped to the to the west. So, uh, I mean, I, I agree it's, it was sort of bowl-shaped to the, you know, uh, north a, and south. But. Yeah, there's a, like a sloped hill here that goes down, and then this gently slopes toward the road. But there's no bowl. No, there is. I don't know if the grasses are growing in there and you don't see it. Well, the grass aren't that big. There's a, there's a big, big area. Okay, so Can you pick it out on here? That's a little on a small scale. Okay. Right where? Here's the, the, uh, the camp. We got the arrow. The main. Okay. I don't have it, but it would be uh, Oh, it's all the way back here? Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's, that's the depression area? I'm not. No, I can't say for sure. It's somewhere in that area. It's not next to the trees. So this is, that was 442.
Yeah, no, he's putting up here. He's trying to try to Oh, it's come in the driveway on the right-hand side then? Okay. What would be good, and you probably will have to do it anyway for the excavator is to, is to stake just, it. We'd just like to, to point out that if you get too close to the woods, you risk spilling over into the what looks like a, a seasonal wetlands in the woods, and we want to avoid that if possible. So just, you know, keep it between the driveway and the woods. And, and we should have it delineated. Or yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Right. I have to deal with the, the DEC and they're are they inspecting it as yes you do it? they have to be there uh, they're going to probably they're, they're going to probably want it staked hour prior yes and they'll probably want it staked so they know exactly right. where it is and so your excavator also knows where he's supposed to be depositing the material right. so it doesn't end up elsewhere so to speak Was there? No, well you, well, you two guys can, are you, are you done <laughs> with, your, well, with your observations? Yeah, that was our only concern. Okay. Well, then we will go to the CAB. Good evening, board. Uh, CAB visited the site over the weekend. Um, there's... Not too many uh, big things concerning uh, the 90 by 40 section they plan to make into this sand uh, beach. It was staked out. Um, the little, it'll sort of solve the lily pad issue that they have there. Um, the one other thing I would like to ask the applicant, do you plan to replace some of the uh, foliage that's been taken out? I saw there was a number of trees cut down to the right and the left. Do you plan to replace that? Uh, with just to put back some of the foliage there, just to hold, just to hold the bank. Okay. All right. Um, just a suggestion because if, if the lake ever does come up, it'll pull your sand. It'll also pull all of that gravel there back into the lake. Where I know it's a low part because um, it doesn't get super deep until you go. I don't know. It's like 20 feet out. It's where everything drops off. Because uh, I know, because I know somebody who's actually dived that lake, and it goes fairly deep, sort of towards the middle. You got to head towards Camp uh, Ramapo. But just, just the thought down the road to replace um, some of the trees that have been cut. And you know, you, you don't have to replace them with trees. Just something that'll hold the soil there. Um, and you can check the DEC. They do offer a plant list that are natural and native to New York that will hold the soil, and that won't erode your bank and all the work you're trying to do. Um, other than those advisement, um, we didn't have anything else and I have a copy for Gretchen. Did you have any questions? Because one of the things we're mandated to do is do a habitat assessment for something of this sort by Arizona. Did you, as our sort of habitat people, did you have any issues or questions I did observations? I mean, there could be uh, waterfowl. I mean, right now, the amphibious life wouldn't be burying themselves in for winter. It's not that cold yet. Um, that would be my, my only thing. I mean, the lily pads or any other amphibious or water life that would be there, um, there's a possibility. I mean, and if anything, uh, snapping turtles uh, I didn't see any in indication of any waterfowl uh, nesting there. Okay. Um, but if a habitat assessment could be done, it might be beneficial um, in some respects to any amphibious life that might be there. Hmm. We know, I guess, the, what is the role of the, uh, and I'm sort of asking Art this because I think he's more familiar with it than I am, they're having a, a, a naturalist uh, on site during the construction period is that is that what that I, I was reading the permit well, and they, mm -hmm. there, there's simply a notification in the permit uh, that the applicant of the project sponsor notify uh, the Bureau of Habitat 48 hours in advance of the time of commencement of the activity mm -hmm. that infers that they may be inspecting <coughs> the work as it occurs okay it's not not required that you know they haven't stated that they definitely will but they're basically putting on, put, I think really putting on notice that they may be inspecting the work as it occurs. Okay. I mean, if the board would like to reference, um, I can't remember which map it is in the comp plan, but Sepasco Lake is co um, 
reviewed in um, the, the work Hudsonia did and also mm -hmm. uh, what uh, Green Plan did with uh, Mr. Fink when they did when they redid the comp plan. I know it's I know it's in, on one of those maps. Okay. So that can be used as a reference too. But from the CAB standpoint, you found no reason. No reason to believe that there's a significant hab habitat of one exact species there. Okay. Or that there would be any harm done to, long-term harm done by the process. No, I, th I, it would, it would be my estimate that the only harm done would be the sediment would be disturbed underneath that's going to be excavated out in the sand put over top. Okay. Other than that, um, outside where they've done clearing, potential nesting of a uh, number of waterfowl species, but other than that, like I s ad advised if they, they would think to replace and mm -hmm. plant additional ones with the right species type, it would come back. Okay. Um, but other than that, the, the lily pads um, would affect certain because if you look at Mill Pond, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I mean, that's, a that's one. Though, I'm sorry. It's a separate application that the whole lake is. Going oh to yeah, that's a whole different. That's a whole different thing. This that's is a whole different. Matter. I'm just referring this is just to the what lily pads Mill, right Mill where Pond has happened when yeah. the lily pads go okay. out of control. Thank you. All right, you are welcome. Right. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open it up to the public for comment. Yes. If you could, if you could, if you could come up to the microphone that way, that way we get it on tape so we have a record for the uh, for the minutes for the meeting and whatnot. My name is Bree Gallagher. I'm the owner of the 974L308 that's next door to the property that you're speaking of. I dropped off a an, uh, report that was done uh, in 2013 when I was interested in buying this property. It's an extensive report due to the valuable wetlands that are there. And I find it hard to believe that uh, Beatty and Watson's uh, report and what's being said here um, that you're talking about the same property. Cutting the trees on the promenade, which is the piece of land that's under discussion right now, bowls like this. I didn't hear when uh, Mr. Baker was given a permit to clear cut or cut on the banks. My understanding was that the town of Rhinebeck didn't allow that kind of cutting within 200 feet of the lake, especially estuary and wetland area. The eagles that were there are gone. The blue heron that were there are gone. The osprey that used to hang around is gone. The two pairs of swans that used to be there are gone. I've lived there uh, 21 years, something like that. A lot of money, a lot of time going into caring for that lake. It's very, very confusing to sit here and listen to someone speak about a parcel of land that they've already done an enormous amount of clearing on um, because of where it is. Uh, and so I hope that you'll take it under consideration. Like I said, I dropped the report off today. It's about 21, 22 pages with all kinds of maps. Uh, it would be good to have a resolve that works, but not as a neighbor to watch what's going on. Rules apply to everyone. It does not seem that the permits were gotten, turbidity curtains set, at any point over the last two years. And the lily pads are not so good. But every time someone messes on the banks of that lake and the sediment goes in, this is where we, uh, where we end up. So 
Um, if someone could let me know when the DEC gave the permits for the trees to come down, I would be grateful for that. And I would ask, would you please take the time to review that report I dropped off so that my neighbors, that all of us that have worked very hard and made enormous financial investments uh, into seeing Sapasco Lake be healthy. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, I did read the report, it was very helpful. No permit was given by DEC for any tree clearing or work within the wetland. And the, indeed, the DEC permit said there should be no work within the wetland. It was an excavation within the lake it's area for the sand. And there were no permits uh, given by the town over the last few years to do any clearing in that area. It's, that I'm um, it's, with. it's very, very sad. It's very sad to see what was done. It's right. very sad. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Excuse me, Michael. Yes. Is, uh, does the wetland buffer apply in the same way as it does? Yes, it would. So and, and in the DEC permit, it... So 100 foot from the edge of the lake or, or anything where the lily pads are? A, a permit would be required to do any work in that area in the buffer, yes. All right. Okay. Uh, any clear cutting of any sort. Uh, anyone else wish to comment? Yes. Thank you for listening. Um, I grew up on the lake. Um, I just had my 52nd birthday yesterday, and my name's Ginny Collins. I'm a biologist, wildlife biologist. Um, my training's actually seabird conservation work, and I work mostly on the West Coast, but as a organic gardener, um, mother, concerned citizen, um, I'm dismayed at what has happened at the lake. I agree with everything Bree just stated. But mostly I'm amazed that as a lake owner, we were not at all aware of this until yesterday. And um, I worked my hardest talking with Eric Kiviat today. Um, I got a hold of him and he said at this meeting there should be a map that he um, conducted of the lake and you know the wetlands it shows all the area that we're discussing and you can see on the map what's designated as wetland what's designated as estuary etc um, it's an area where the Blanding's turtle is um, an endangered species um, and I as far as I know endangered species means that you shouldn't disturb the habitat um, there are two records of them in Lake Sapasco, and they have been recorded with the DEC, so I'm not sure how the DEC granted the permit. I don't know about that. Um, and we're wondering if a biodiversity assessment has been done, because there are other species of concern. In addition to the Blanding's turtle, there's a river otter, there's the possibility of the northern cricket frog, um, and... Uh, I guess just last week, my daughter and I were, we've been rowing down to that end of the lake, taking pictures and uh, looking at the active foraging, uh, migrating solitary sandpiper, which is a, a rare species, and it was foraging right in that area that's going to be dredged. Just for your information, there's a green heron, there's a baby from this year that. Um, we were watching, raising its crest, flicking its tail, feeding right in that same area. Um, there are a bunch of, I have a whole bird list here, if anyone's a bird lover. <laughs> but it's an important nursery for turtle species, and um, I think the Blanding deserves some protection and some uh, oh, just please uh, don't the animals don't have anyone to speak for them, so I'd appreciate it if you could take a look at the circumneutral bog lake situation and make sure that it's protected. Yeah. And my daughter has something to say, too.
I was planning on saying this later, but I guess I'll say it now. But, um, I would like to begin by saying that as humans and a top species, we must care for smaller animals and the environment we depend on. The fish, the birds, the insects, the frogs, they're all counting on us to make the right choice. A square yard at first glance may not seem like a like a large Just read it for a square yard at first glance may not seem like a large part of the ecosystem, but it is. If the dredging goes through, the entire food chain will be drastically affected. There's no question about it. The gorgeous, pristine lake water will be disturbed, murky, and unforgiving. I always look forward to canoeing or rowing down to the north end of the lake. You absolutely never know what you will see. Maybe the large snapping turtle Wally will be back or the beautiful magnolia warbler twittering away in the treetops. Can you imagine this eco exquisite ecosystem disappearing? I sure can't. And I have one more letter. Um, our, two of our neighbors are in New York City and unable to attend this meeting, and I promised I would read the letter for them. It says, to the members of the board, it's from Andrew and Laura Swain at 318 Sapasco Lake Road. I am unable to attend the September 18th hearing concerning dredging in Lake Sapasco, and thank you in advance for considering these written remarks. My wife and I have been residents of Sapasco Village for almost 30 years. Lake Sapasco and its related ecosystem are a source of comfort, wonder, and joy for us and for all of our village neighbors. The lake is a unique resource and teaching opportunity for our children, as well as an important feature of day-to-day -day life in the village. We are therefore deeply concerned about the proposal to conduct dredging at the north end of the lake. The lake is home to many species of wildlife that look to it for nourishment and protection and enhance our lives as residents of the village. We understand that it provides important nursery grounds for bass, sunfish, three turtle species, many dragonfly and insect species. Lily pads provide shelter and safe haven for baby fish, reptiles, amphibians. We understand that just this week, neighbors have observed a juvenile green heron, a great blue heron, two rare migratory solitary sandpipers, spotted sandpipers in the area that's proposed to be dredged. Lake wildlife includes migratory species. A kettle of at least 100 broad-winged hawks visited this week with two peregrine falcons. Migrating osprey and bald eagles are seen there along with resident red tail and red shoulder hawks. At present, the lake is clean and clear with many indicator species that are dependent upon one another. There are freshwater mollusks in the proposed dredging area that would have co-evolved with the bass. The species might not survive without each other. Crayfish are also found in the lake indicating a healthy ecosystem. Dredging of the large area proposed would destroy the fish and reptile nurseries, disrupt the role of mollusks in the food chain. Foraging grounds would be disrupted with deleterious effects on migratory life that depend on them for nourishment. We ask you to consider carefully the negative impact that the proposed dredging will have on avian, aquatic, reptile, and insect life, and the quality of human life in Lake Sapasco and its surrounding area. The risks to this ecosystem are significant. The opportunity to preserve this rare and important aspect of Dutchess County's natural landscape is yours. We urge you to deny the dredging permit application. Respectfully submitted, Andrew Swain. And I'd just like to conclude with the fact that um, the habitat fact sheet from Hudsonia states that this is a rare habitat type, the circumneutral bog lake, with species of conservation concern, the river otter, the northern cricket frog, possibly diverse communities of mollusks, dragonflies, and damselflies. So, um, in conclusion, I would like um, I am not sure how
how the permit was issued. I would really honestly like to know who in DEC issued the permit. I'd like a copy of the permit. And just to say that the silk curtain, according to Eric Kvyat and others, the turbidity it has small holes in it and it will contain the coarse particles but not the fine particles. What if a snapping turtle hits the curtain? What if it falls down and all you need is a strong wind to bring all that silt down? And it will affect the whole lake, not just 500 feet from the proposed dredging. I can answer a couple of those questions uh, so you don't have to search the planning board file. The planning board does have a copy of the DEC permit in its file. Uh, the permit was issued uh, on the 11th of May of this year. Uh, it was issued by the uh, permit administrator, Deputy Regional Permit Administrator, Scott Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D. Michael, may I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, Mr. Baker, when were the trees cut down and why were they cut down? The trees that were cut down were so that the excavator would have room to swing it through to what was necessary. And when were they cut down? Uh, they were cut down a while ago. And Michael, there should have been a permit to yes. do that? Um, is, is, is there further public comment at this point? Yes. Uh, can you come up to the microphone? Thank you. Thank you both very much. I'm uh, Carl Paris. Uh, I also live on the lake as part of the Sapasco Homeowners Association. And uh, I've been uh, the functioning head of the Lake Preservation Association for, for some years. And we have um, put a lot of energy and money into trying to maintain the environmental health of the lake. And uh, as part of that, I just want to mention that we're not removing all the lily pads from the lake. We're just removing lily pads around some of the swimming and dock areas where they're being choked in. Uh, we're, um, and then there's also, in some cases, some floating peat bog-like areas that are right up against the docks so that um, people really can't swim in the, in, right off their docks. So uh, we actually, when we, do, do the, when we do treat the lake, we try to do it with, with processes that are as specific and as pinpointed as possible with as least amount of collateral damage to other parts of the environmental, uh, ecological parts of the lake. One of the things that puzzles me about this whole thing is when we have applied, for instance, to treat for Eurasian water milfoil, we have to send out certified letters to every single property on the lake as well as, I can't remember, it was a quarter or a half mile downstream. Here we are proposing to do a dredging which can have significant impact on the water column throughout the lake and none of us were notified. I found out about this for ac by accident because in the course of applying for the permit to remove some of the lily pads, um, it said, why are you removing lily pads from um, site number five, which is the Baker property, because they have another permit that's been approved to do the dredging. So that was the first, I knew Jeff had mentioned he was thinking of it, but that was the first I had seen that it had actually already been issued, and I would have expected the DEC, because of the impact on the, all the, the whole lake and all the owners on the lake, to have kind of communicated with all of us. And then I'm also wondering why the planning board is even having a hearing on this if the DEC is given a permit and why we didn't have a broader notification. So be, I have some other comments, but those are some of the questions I have okay. if you could help out. I think I can answer your questions. Basically, there are town laws that also refer to this project that <coughs> extend beyond just simple dredging. And probably everyone wasn't informed because since it's on a site-specific area, very specific, it's not the whole lake. It's just this one area. It's only people within so many feet of this right. property would be receiving certified mail of this I can understand area. if you wanted to build a garage, but you're doing something in the lake itself, in a body of water. And whenever you do something in a body of water, you cannot contain it. Oh, I, I, I agree with you. That's physically true. But right. the way our law is written, it's written that notification goes to, pro to property owners within a certain distance of the property itself. 
For example, such as DEC, when you treat the lake more as a whole, obviously everyone is going to be infected. And very likely, and I think that could happen here too, but the way our law is written, we're restricted mm -hmm. to uh, requiring certification, certified letters, mm -hmm. just to a certain extent. That's just the way the law doesn't mean it's always appropriate. Mm -hmm. For most cases, it is. For cases on a lake or something like this, I think it's something that needs to be looked at because clearly, as you say, it's more than just adjacent property owners and things like that that are likely to be impacted by it. Well, that that appears to me to be a, a hole or a flaw. In, in oh, we have a couple, we have a few in the zoning law. Yeah. Um, now the other thing is in the permit that I was applying for, it said that the permit that had been um, uh, issued for the Baker property was for an area of 40 by 45 feet in terms of the dredging. The markers in the lake are much, much larger than that. I don't know what the exact measurement is, but I would guess it's at least yeah. 45 by 100 feet, if not more than that. It's more than um, 45. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, and I have, I took some photographs today and you can just see kind of, kind of how extensive it is. Um, and uh, so having had a prior experience where what was said in a permit application was very different from what was done in terms of something that camp did some years ago if you remember again i would like to see clarify what are the discrepancies between what the permit was issued for and possibly what actually is getting done and how 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 do we make sure that those things um coincide with each other um the other thing is uh in talking to our lake management company um we, we've been surprised at all the hoops we've had to jump through just to pull some lily pads out where, we, where we're very much dealing with the surface area of the lake where we also be using turbidity curtains. Um, have soil samples been done uh, in terms of uh, toxic metals and so forth? That's generally something that you do when you do dredging to see was what you're taking out actually safe to put any place. Um, and um, so that's, a, that's another question I have. So has, have we done the sediment testing? It wasn't clear to me, because I haven't seen the permit, how deep uh, they're going to dredge when, when away from the land in terms of how deep that's going. So how much, how many, essentially how many feet of, of actual soil, sediment, mud, and so forth will, will be taken out? Um, when is this going to be done? What time of year? Who's going to do it? Um, and uh, so those are, in, in how long will this turbidity curtain stay up, and who will who will keep an eye and maintain them? So those are, those are my questions. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Okay. Other comments from the public. Nancy. If I may, I'm Ryan McTown, historian, and I appreciate all the ecology uh, concerns and. Uh, uh, questions that have been raised, but I wanted to give you a little perspective on the property. Um, it was part of um, property that belonged to a tourist home boarding house kind of um, affair, turn of the century, and uh, the Gazette had many articles about um, the grove there, the having picnics and um, boating and swimming. Uh, on that end of the lake. Um, then in later years, probably 40 years ago, um, there were little cabins there and it was, um, it, it was covered with sand and they had swimming in that area. So that um, there is a history of it being used in that way. Although, of course, um, because the land slopes toward the lake, there'll be silt and sediment um, accumulating and, and so the ecology would cha change over the years. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, but I think a number of issues have been raised here tonight which I think uh, need to be looked at and I'm gonna ask the town, the planning board to table further consideration of this application until first I can have a discussion with DEC to determine just exactly what the basis of their decision was. They uh, did not provide us with any information about how they came to this decision or any of the other facts that we would need. 
our town is required, our planning board is required to do a habitat study for all special use permits, and this would certainly be an instance in which that would have to happen. I want to discuss with DEC, did they do that? What have they done so that if they looked into some of these questions? Uh, we have no indication that they have or haven't. We do have a copy of the permit. We do not have a copy of any supporting documentation they might have had or studies or anything like that, so I need to talk to DEC. Also, if there was clear cutting, for whatever reason, it does require a town permit to do that, particularly within the buffer around a wetland or a pond or a lake. So this may well indeed be a zoning violation of town law, in which case I'm going to speak to the zoning enforcement officer to do an inspection to see whether or not there is a violation here, in which case some form of remediation would then be the way to uh, lift the violation. So having said these things, I would like to ask for a motion of the planning board to uh, table this uh, application until we get some of these questions answered from the ZEO and from DEC. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Very good. Uh, what we will do is um, I will do my best to make the information available. Uh, I know a number of you have my phone number, so you can call me if you like to. I do want to know what DC has to say. I may well be asking the uh, CAB to look into, and I hope that Ryan's still here, into the habitat, thank you Ryan, into the habitat issues if DEC has not done it. Uh, we cannot proceed with a special use permit unless that has been done. In many cases, if someone's putting up a garage or something like that on a lot, you know, uh, without any natural issues, then of course it's not necessary and that can be recognized. In a case like this, clearly it's very necessary. Um, I'd also like to say this is exactly why we hold public hearings. Information comes to our attention that we may not have otherwise and we really depend on the people of the community to work with us. It's vitally important and we really do appreciate it. So um, that's where this stands right now. Um, once we get the answers that we need, the information that we need, uh, we will uh, perhaps if I were to call the, um, I know Carl, I know a couple of you people, perhaps the uh, person who's in charge of your uh, homeowners association, something like that, to let you know where things stand, how things are going, and how we hope to proceed. Uh, and I, I do thank you all very much for coming and taking the time. Uh, you all spoke very well. Thank you. Excuse me, Michael. I have a general yes. question about our approach to these things. Given that eutrophication or you know the succession in a lake is a on natural, ongoing thing, are we uh, is our guideline to uphold the, the lake as it is now, or or to prevent eutrophication, or to just let things go the way they always go, or? That, well, that's why we need to have some sort of habitat study, some sort of look into what's there, what's happening, and so why it's happening. It's on a case by case basis. Absolutely. No general approach. Absolutely. To these things. I mean, it, we do the same with streams in Rhinebeck. Uh, the Crum Elbow is a Class A stream, drinking water quality. The Rhinebeck Kill, for most of it, is Class D. You don't even want to put your foot in it. Uh, so each stream, they're different, and how we deal with them and treat them is different based upon what they're capable of being. Uh, if we can try to improve them, we certainly do want to do that, bring, you know, the classifications up. It makes the, the water far more valuable and, you know, good for the community. But yes, everything has to be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Michael, I wonder about requesting the DEC when they get a Rhinebeck request for a permit to automatically notify us. I th think through their... It's um, that it comes to us, you know, two months later or something. Well, they may have notified us, but the notifications go to the town clerk's office. Well, and sometimes the the they don't make it to the, whoever's going to be responsible for dealing with it in, in case such as this. Uh, I had not seen anything from DEC on this until... Um, actually, some of the questions were raised and some of the issues were raised, and then it was brought to my attention. Yes. And, and this may well have happened as well. It just didn't come from the clerk's office down to the planning board or the zoning enforcement officer or anything like that. Okay. We're going to work on that. And one way of working on that would be some communities do this, is that when notices come in from an outside agency, they're posted on the town website. Yeah, that's a good, that's an excellent suggestion. And then everyone has access to it, um, the public as well as, as people within town government. Okay, um, we will let you know where the next steps are uh, once they're, once they're uh, put into motion, once we get some results.
And once again, thank you all for coming and taking the time tonight. Okay, we have another public hearing at 8 o'clock, so perhaps there are a few things we can do in the interim. You're going to cover the Hello. Side of well, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Okay. All right. Our next one is our regular business. Uh, the next item up is Mench Grassmere LLC, 29 Mill Road and U.S. Route 9 Subdivision Plat Approval. Initial presentation of application for subdivision plat approval for consolidation of a 25.2 acre, a 29.5 acre, and a 448 acre parcels, all within the RA10 district into a single 305 acre parcel. Planning board review and, as timely, classification related processing under Town Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, and Seeker. Good evening. Anyway. Uh, my name is Anthony Mirando. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Cuddy and Fader, and we're here on behalf of the Grasmere Project. Uh, Jonathan is with us as well, of course, as you know him. Uh, Jonathan's just putting up the plat really quickly. I'll just give you a very quick summary of why we're here. Um, I think you recall this summer, we were before you on a, a number of uh, somewhat minor requests involving closing out conditions for the existing Grasmere project. Um, this board back in July granted uh, site plan amendment, uh, lot consolidation, also a couple other items, extensions of the approvals. Um, one item that was left open was the final condition of the phase one site plans that we're trying to resolve so that the chair may uh, sign that plan and we can start some uh, uh, restoration work and, and other, uh, other work on the property. The request uh, that we had left outstanding was an issue dealing with um, whether or not a subdivision to create the 250 acre parcel uh, for the country in two, that is the Grasmere project, um, would be removed or whether there was some other way to address it. Um, given that there's subsequent phases that we'll be dealing with this project, some details that will be uh, developed over the next you know, few months that we'll be coming back before this board to deal with. In the meantime, one of the, the, one of the items the board suggested that we look at was consolidating three tax parcels rather than what we initially proposed of consolidating two tax parcels. Very quickly, you'll see on, the, on this proposed plat, which is actually the other way, <laughs> if we turn it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the original, two, the original two lots that we had proposed to consolidate were the two in the front of the property, up uh, you know, the axis that comes off Mill Road, as you can see. And by consolidating those, we would be addressing, uh, tangentially, a comment by the DOH, the Department of Health, to have all our septic um, on a single parcel. Um, the, next, the issue that came up then was how to address, again, uh, addressing the creation of the lot. The board suggested that we then just consolidate this third larger parcel into these two parcels to make one parcel. Um, this is approximately, this parcel here is approximately 25 acres, this parcel here is approximately 29 and a half acres, and this large parcel is approximately 450 acres. As you may recall with the Grasmere project, um, all of this, all of the land included in these two parcels was, was evaluated as part of that process and a portion of the larger parcel was. So what we've done now is come back with this consolidated lot, uh, consolidated lot plat uh, for the board to review. Uh, we think it's what you asked for, <laughs> we hope so. Um, one thing we want to note, and, and it's, it's very clear in the code, it's very clear in the existing approvals, um, that land beyond the 250 acres, once it's delineated, will still be developable, still be yes. subdividable in the future. It's just a minimum of 250 acres that is being dedicated to the Grasmere um, country in two. So I think we all acknowledge that. Um, that's really the proposal. I know we uh, have a small time frame here before the public hearing, so I want to move quickly. Um, Jonathan, if you have anything to add, um, we, we, we would say that one of the things that came up tonight was costs associated with applications. <laughs> and, and one of our, uh, our requests that uh -oh. we included in our submission was, a, uh, for purposes of, of this consolidation, a waiver of the survey requirement. Uh, your code does have, provide the board the authority to do that. Yeah. Um, so we would uh, put that out there as well. Yeah. We can certainly provide a basis for that if you'd like, but I'd, I'd open it up to the board if you have any questions. I think that's a fair request. I mean, we know how much land is there. I mean, as I look at it, it looks sort of like China with Mongolia up there <laughs> a little bit, but I, I, I think we'd recognize it as, in, it's, it's here in the States. I think we're good. Yeah. I, I don't see a need to, to do that, the entire property, for this particular purpose. I don't think it serves any, any value, really. And again, we'll be coming back in the future to, to, to cut out that, that right. actual. So at yeah. that point, we'd be probably the more efficient exactly. and appropriate time to yeah. answer. Yep. Anyone else have a problem with that? Okay. Very That's good. Um, que questions from the board? Hearing none, I have a uh, procedural resolution. Yeah, the, the procedural resolution acknowledges that uh, uh, certain 
review of uh, the consolidation of parcels has already been accomplished uh, with the WAC, the CAD, the field observation, et cetera. So none of that uh, has to be repeated. And it does also acknowledge that uh, uh, the matter of consolidation of parcels uh, was the subject of the EIS, the subsequent statement of findings, the statement of consistency under the LWRP, et cetera. So the bottom line is at this point in time, they're really down to endorsing the sketch plan classifying it as a minor subdivision consolidation of parcels in their entirety uh, and uh, scheduling the uh, public hearing. Yeah, I um, think he's pretty much just read the resolution. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little uh, extemporaneous. 40 on October 16th. Could I hear a motion? So moved. All in favor? Aye. I mean, I need a second, sorry. Thank second. you. All in favor? Aye. Very good. You're done. Okay. And of Great. course, there'll be a resolution at that time. Yes. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. okay. We still. All right. Uh, Share to Rossiter, 12 Duchess Terrace, site plan review approval. Initial presentation of application for site plan approval for proposed porch repair, sills and replacement windows, and other window replacements on our circa 1850 dwelling within the Rankliff Overlay District Planning Board Review and is timely processing under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning and Seeker. Hi, I'm Sher de Rossiter. It's actually 17 Duchess Terrace, not 12 Duchess Terrace. So well. You know? She had it right and I read it wrong. <laughs> should have <laughs> kept my fine. glasses on. Thank you. That's fine. Um, this is a f what should be fairly simple, I imagine. I want to replace the old windows with energy efficient windows. And we talked about it and the proposal is that they could match the windows that have already been replaced. And so I want to go ahead and replace the weather side windows and the two old bathroom windows that are uh, uh, sash windows um, on the property, preferably so I don't have high fuel bills in future. So mostly it's about energy efficiency um, and the windows are old and not very nice. There are two windows which I am not going to replace. Um, those have a curved top and are historically interesting um, and interesting to me as well. Um, so keeping some of the character of the house is important. Those are not on the weather side of the, the house, so it doesn't matter to me at all. Uh, well, we did have a pre-submission meeting and we went over what's proposed to do and uh, Nancy was with us when we did this and what's being proposed will fit in very nicely with the existing structure. It will work very well just from what we saw. Mm -hmm. Questions from the planning board? Well, I have a procedural resolution which I will go over quickly before Art does it. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we will accept, we accept the application supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the planning board, its advisors, and the public. And there are, there are supporting documents showing exactly what's being proposed and what it will be. We're classifying it as a type two action under seeker for which further environmental quad review is precluded. We will schedule the public hearing for Monday, October 16th, 2017 at 6.45. And the clerk will undertake or otherwise cause noticing posting thereof to happen. Who would like to go to Rhinecliffe? Eric? I'll go. And Sharon. Okay, we'll do the uh, site visit. Um, we are going to refer it to the Conservation Advisory Board and to the, uh, also the Water Advisory Dentistry. Commission. Yeah. yeah. WAC for comment, hopefully within 30 days. And we're going to authorize the town planning consultant without prejudice to any information or comment that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise on the basis of both the above cited field visit and referral to prepare working drafts of an approval resolution for the planning board's consideration on October 16, 2017, or as may be later timely. Could I have a motion to approve? Move. A second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. So we'll see you on the 16th. And if you will get in touch with Eric and Sharon about a time they can come out and take a look and, and do the site visit. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait a minute. Put them on. I can see the clock. Take them off and I can read. Okay. Uh, our next uh, Gibraltar Management, 7047 New York State, Route 9 North, Certificate of Removal or Demolition. 
In consideration of expiration of prior approval, presentation of reapplication for certificate of removal or demission under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Section 12562, in the matter of the proposed demolition in full of two historic barns within the rural countryside RC5 district, being an unlisted action under Seeker, for which a negative deck under Seeker was previously issued by the Planning Board. So my, uh, my name is Scott Zelkowitz on behalf of Gibraltar Management, um, here to uh, to uh, try to reapply for the permit that expired. Um, I did have a contractor that fell through, um, and it's hard to get insured contractors at a reasonable cost to come up here sometimes, and that's what took so long to get this done. So I'm asking for consideration to have this application approved again. Very good. Any questions for the applicant? Well, uh, I mean, is, is it, do you see anything in the future that you're going to get somebody to do I, this? I, I, I didn't come back and I have somebody now pending your approval. So it took a while to do that and I wasn't going to come get the, try to get the approval again and then not have anybody. But yes, I do have somebody so now. I, I, my plan is yes, before, before winter. So. Any other questions? Okay, I have a draft resolution here. Uh, we're going to accept the reapplication and supporting documents as adequate for initiating review by the planning board, its advisors, and public. And we're going to schedule a public hearing on the application for October 16, 2017, at what? 650. And direct the clerk to under particularized cause noticing and posting thereof. And we're going to authorize the town planning consultant without prejudice to any information or comment that may be presented at the public hearing to prepare a working draft of an approval resolution for the planning board's consideration on October 16th, 2017, or as may be later timely. Could I hear a motion to approve? So Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you. We'll see you then. Okay, thank you. Oh. Yeah, we're down to our last item. Um, and this will be a continuation of the public hearing on Hudson Solar. Um, for those of you who may have come late, the Planning Board has accepted its role as lead agency under Seeker for this project. And we will be... We will be, yes. <laughs> on October 2nd, we are going to be, we'll have our normal business meeting, which will probably be very short at which point we are going to adjourn the business meeting and go into a workshop session um, to go over the environmental uh, assessment form and to determine what other studies we feel are necessary to give us a full understanding of what this uh, application, what this applicant is, is proposing to do and what the impacts could be. And all the comments that have been received. We will be at 8 o'clock tonight opening this public hearing for any further comments. Uh, I think the applicant may have a few things to show or some other information to present tonight. And um, we'll see how that, how that works out. And we will be, of course, continuing the public hearing again uh, until probably, let me see, October 16th? Yeah, until October 16th. We will not be continuing it to October 2nd since we'll just have a short business meeting and we will then be doing the workshop. So we'll continue it to October 16th in which we can then also inform everybody of any decisions made at the workshop meeting in terms of further studies, information, things like that and who else we're going to be uh, working with to try and get answers to other questions. And of course at that time we'll be taking public comment again on the 16th. So in four minutes we'll take public comment now. Everybody's name and address yeah. when you come up. Yeah. Yeah, Gretchen's a stickler for that. <laughs> I'm going to go out and sit in the audience to be entertained. Oh, yes, <laughs> and, and, and Sharon will be recusing herself. Sure. Sharon can go home, I guess. Yeah, home. yeah, you can go home. We have a. Only well, left for adjournment. We have a I said what? <laughs> yeah, if anyone else leaves, we're screwed, so.
Gutenberg Road special use permits and site plan approval, continuation from August 21st, 2017 of combined public hearing on applications for special use permits, solar power plant and major excavation, and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning in the matter of a proposed ground mounted solar power plant on a leased portion of property owned by Barry Sherrod and located within the rural countryside RC5 and agricultural 20 districts and adjacent to a national register property being classified as a type 1 action under seeker for which a seeker notice of intent to serve as lead agency has been issued by the planning board and as I said earlier uh, the planning board has been confirmed as lead agency uh, for this uh, for this project whenever you're ready take it away uh, the applicant has some new information he wants to present this evening and I think we're going to probably want to turn the lights out Gretchen If I turn the other light out, is that going to be uh, comfortable for everybody? I thought it might make that a little more easy to read. What? That's a lot better. Mike. So, your, your head's in the way there. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Jeff Irish with Hudson Solar, and uh, uh, obviously the projector is working better than it did last time. Um, so these are some of the charts that I was going to present last time that I ended up speaking uh, verbally about, um, but the, also some new information in response to some of the questions that were raised uh, last time and also by some of the uh, investigating agencies for the seeker process. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what community solar is because it, there seems to be a lot of confusion about that. How does it work? Why this site? Um, visibility and screening. Uh, although I'm not going to talk, I mean, I'll talk about the natural uh, <coughs> visibility and existing screening, but some of the conversations, conversations I've had with the planning board um, are indicating that they will probably be uh, or are considering selecting an independent consultant to assess the visual impact and the screening. And I think that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'll talk about the environmental design, the noise design, because I think noise um, has been an early misconception that uh, I think we can technically address pretty simply. Uh, safety, uh, that, because some questions have been brought up about that. Uh, the construction process and timeline, monitoring and security, and then maintenance and upkeep. I'm not really going to talk about the decommissioning plan at this point. I think it might be a little premature, but um, that was part of the original submission. And if you excuse me a minute, I just have to get a pointer. 